Chapter 45, The Dead Robots. The gosling floated on the breeze beside his mother as she climbed down the cliffside. Down they went past ledges and seagulls and tough little trees until they were standing on the rocky shore with the cliffs looming behind them. The gravesite had changed. Raza's crate was gone, lost to weather or waves. Some of the robot parts were gone too. Other parts were gritty with sand or were tangled in seawood or were inhabited by small scuttling creatures. One smashed torso still had a leg, a hand and legs attached. Roz and Brightbill huddled around the corpse and studied the mess of tubes spilling out. This thing used to look like you, said Brightbill. Yes, we are the same type of robot, said Roz. And now this robot is dead? In a way. Will you ever die, Mama? I think so. Will I die? All living things die eventually. The gosling's face scrunched with worry. Bright Bill, you are going to live a long and happy life. Roz laid a hand on her son's back. You should not worry about death. The gosling's face relaxed. And then he pointed to a small round shape on the back of the dead robot's head. What's that? He said. Roz leaned in closer. That is a button, which is a knob on a piece of machinery that can be pressed to operate it. Bright Bill began pressing the button. Click, click, click. Nothing is happening, he said. Probably because this robot is dead. Click, click, click. Mama, do you have a button? Bright Bill watched as his mother's head turned all the way around and a small button came into view. You've got one, he said. I've never noticed it before. Neither did I, said the robot. The gosling giggled. Oh, Mama, you have so much to learn about yourself. Roz reached for the button on her head, but her hand automatically stopped before she could touch it. She tried with her other hand, but it automatically stopped as well. It seems I cannot press the button, she said. Would you like to try? What will happen? I think that I will shut down. But I think you could simply press the button again to restart me. You think? Squawked Bright Bill. What if you're wrong? What if you wake up different? What if you never wake up, Mama? I don't want to shut you down. Roz turned her head back around and saw that Bright Bill's face was once again scrunched with worry. She knelt beside him and said, Of course you do not have to shut me down. I'm sorry if I scared you. Are you okay? I'm okay, Bright Bill <laughs> sniffed and wiped his eyes, and then he heard splashing. Otters were playing in the ocean. He had never seen otters before. He stared as they swam and dove and sloshed around with one another. They seemed to be having a ridiculous amount of fun, and suddenly the gosling was smiling again. Hello, my name is Bright Bill, he shouted over the waves, and this is my mama. Her name is Roz. The last time those otters had seen Roz, they had thought she was some kind of monster. But since then, they'd heard that she was remarkably friendly and that she'd even adopted an orphan gosling. And so the otters smiled at Roz and Bright Bill, and then they swam straight over and splashed onto the rocks. Hello there, said the biggest otter. Nice to meet you both. Actually, Roz, we've met once before, but you might not remember me. My name's Shelly. I do remember you, said the robot, but I am glad to learn your name, Shelly. You know each other, said the gosling. These otters were the first animals I ever met, said Roz. They were also the first animals who ever ran away from me. Yeah, sorry about that, said Shelly, as the other otters sniffed the robot's legs. You know, Bright Bill, when we first saw your mom, she was packed in a box and surrounded by soft, squishy stuff. Bright Bill's brow furrowed. You wouldn't believe how small she looked, all folded up in there. Bright Bill's nose sniffled. <laughs> we thought she was dead, but when we reached into the box, she came to life and climbed out looking like a sparkling monster. 
Bright Bill's eyes welled up with tears, and then he felt his mother scoop him into her arms. Are you okay? She whispered into his ear. I think I've learned enough about robots for today, he whispered back. I'm sorry, Otter, said Roz, but we really must be going. I hope I didn't upset the little guy, said Shelley. I thought he'd like to hear how we first met. Brightville will be fine, said Roz, using a friendly voice, but we have had a very busy day and we should go home. It was nice to see you again. Goodbye. Roz turned and with her long stride, she carried her son away from the gravesite and over to the base of the sea cliffs. Would you like to sit on my shoulder as I climb, said the robot. I feel like flying, said the gosling. I'll meet you at the top. Bright Bill flapped his wings and disappeared into the sky. Roz began scaling the wall. Up she went, expertly negotiating rocky columns and ledges until she hoisted herself onto the clifftop where two young bears were waiting. Hello, bears. Oh, chapter 46, The Fight. Hello, bears. My name is Roz. Oh, we know who you are, said the sister bear. Her voice dripped with sarcasm. We're very happy to see you again. Yes, we're very happy to see you again, echoed the brother bear. Why do you always repeat what I say, said the sister bear to her brother. It's so annoying. I was just backing you up. Well, let me do the talking. Fine, you don't have to be so mean about it. The bickering bears were interrupted by the robot's friendliest voice. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? How rude of us, said the sister bear. My name is Nettle, and this is my little brother, Thorn. I'm not little, snapped Thorn under his breath. It is lovely to meet you both, said Roz, but I'm afraid I really must be going. And I'm afraid we can't let you do that. Nettle stepped in Roz's path. My brother and I, we don't like monsters. I am not a monster. I am a robot. Whatever you are, we don't like you, said Thorn. We hear you've become very comfortable on our island, said Nettle. Now we're going to make you very uncomfortable. Yeah, we're going to make you very uncomfortable. Stop repeating me, Thorn. Poor Roz was in serious trouble. The bears were closing in on her, but she couldn't run, she couldn't hide, and she couldn't fight. The robot didn't know what to do, but before she could do anything, there was a loud squawk and a streak of feathers. Stay away from my mama! Bright Bill swooped down and skidded to a stop between the robot and the bears. So the rumors are true. True, Nettle laughed. Ha, there really is a runty gosling who thinks the robot is his mother. How could anyone be so stupid? Do yourself a favor, gosling, and fly away before you get hurt. She is right, Bright Bill, said Roz. Please let me handle this. But the gosling stood his ground. He spread his wings and hopped around, ready to defend his mother. The bears roared with laughter. Then, with a flick of her paw, Nettle sent... Bright Bill tumbling over the ground over and over until he flopped onto his back and scared up at the sky, stunned. This is our island, snarled Nettle, and it's time for you to go, growled Thorn. Roz made herself as big as possible. She banged her chest and roared wild, angry sounds. But the bears were not intimidated. They roared right back, and then... They attacked. Nettle pulled Roz into a fierce bear hug while Thorn clawed at her legs. The robot tried to shake free, but the bears would not let go of their prayer. Pray, not this time. A cloud of dust bloomed around the trio as they thrashed closer to the edge of the cliff. All of a sudden, something burst out from the trees and op onto the open cliff top. Mother Bear. She was gigantic, like a mountain of golden fur, and she was furious. It seemed like this would be the end for our robot bot. But Mother Bear wasn't there to join the fight. She was there to break it up. No! Thorn, get over here this instant! The young bears should have listened to their mother, 
Instead, they pretended not to hear her. Nettle slashed at Roz's body, and Thorn began wrestling with her foot. He grabbed the foot with both paws and forced it up from the ground. Then, with every ounce of his strength, he twisted the foot around. Reader, the following events happened very quickly. First, there was a strange thwip sound as the robot's right foot popped off her leg and sailed through the air. Then everyone toppled over. Nettle and Roz fell sideways along the edge, but Thorn fell backward and tumbled right off the cliff. Do you know what the most terrible sound in the world is? It is the howl of a mother bear as she watches her cub tumble off a cliff. Mother Bear's howl was so startling that it snapped Bright Bill right out of his stupor. Her howl was so powerful that it shook Roz's entire body. Her howl was so loud that animals heard it clear across the island. But there was no reply from Thorn. Mother Bear's howl slowly faded, and she wilted to the ground. Roz watched as her detached foot sailed over the edge and plummeted down to the shore below. It fell past circling seagulls, smashed off a rock, and disappeared into the waves. And that's when the robot noticed something furry dangling from the cliffside. Thorn! His full weight hung from a tree that was rooted to the rock wall. He gripped the tree tightly in his jaws and looked up at Roz with wide, frightening eyes. I see Thorn, shouted Roz. Grab my legs, quickly. Mother Bear and Nettle scrambled to their feet. Each bear took a leg in her mouth, and together they slowly lowered Roz head first down the cliff. Thorn whimpered through clenched teeth as he watched the robot approach. Then he felt her strong arms wrap around him and heard her booming voice holler, Pull us up! Thorn let go of the branch and cried, Please don't drop me, Roz. I don't want to die. Do not worry, said the robot. I will not drop you. The next few moments seemed to drag on and on. Mother Bear and Nettle kept pulling on Roz's legs, and more of the robot slowly came into view until a furry golden head finally appeared, and Thorn leaped into the embrace of his family. Chapter 47, The Parade Does it hurt? Bright Bill touched the smooth surface where his mother's foot used to be. No, it does not hurt, said Roz, but it will be difficult for me to walk. The bears huddled behind the gosling and stared at the robot stump of a leg. Nobody understood how a foot could pop off like that or how Roz could remain calm. Roz, I'm sorry my cubs attacked you, said Mother Bear. Sometimes they're just completely out of control. It's okay. You know how they are at this age. I can't thank you enough for saving Thorn. I promise my cubs will never bother you again. Isn't that right? Yes, Mother, said Nettle and Thorn together. The robot tried to walk. She bobbed up and down on her uneven legs, which worked well enough on the flat surface of the cliff top. But once she entered the forest, her problem became clear. The smooth stump had no grip, and it slipped around on the forest floor. So Roz tried hopping on her one good foot. She took a few crunching hops and then clanged into a tree trunk. A few more hops, and she crashed into the undergrowth. I'm really sorry I broke off your foot, said Thorn as he helped the robot up from the weeds. I forgive you, said Roz. Whether she was capable of true forgiveness this isn't anyone's guess. But they were nice words, and Thorn felt better when he heard them. It looks like I will have to crawl home, said Roz. Nonsense, said Mother Bear. I have a better idea. Mother Bear lay flat on the ground while her cubs boosted Roz onto her back. Then Bright, Bear fluttered, then Bright Bill fluttered onto the bear's broad shoulders. And when they were safely aboard, the group set off through the forest. The robot was heavy, but she was no trouble for the giant animal. 
Mother Bear strolled along as if it were perfectly normal for a robot to be riding on her back. They made quite a grand procession all walking together like that, and the procession became even grander as deer and raccoon and birds and all kinds of other animals joined in. Everyone wanted to see the mother robot riding the mother bear. The group wound its way past ancient trees and over rolling meadows and through babbling streams, collecting more and more curious animals as they went. It was the grandest parade of wildlife anyone had ever seen, and leading the way was our robot, Roz. But the parade couldn't last forever. As the sun went down, the other animals began drifting away, one by one, and when the parade finally arrived at the nest, only the original members remained. Here we are, said Mother Bear, helping Roz down into the garden. Now, wasn't that better than crawling all the way home? Oh, yes, that was wonderful, said the robot. I cannot imagine a better ending to this day. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was amazing, squeaked the gosling. My friends won't believe me when I tell them I rode across the island on the back of a bear. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, Mother Bear smiled. It's the least I could do after all the trouble these two caused. Her smile became a frown, and she glared at her cubs, who suddenly took great interest in a pebble on the ground. It was late, and it had been a long, difficult day for everyone, so the bears said goodbye and headed back to their cave. Bright Bill and Roz stood in the garden and watched their new friends lumber away, and then the gosling said, Mama, do you think you'll ever walk again? I am not sure, said the robot. But I know who to ask for help. Now, go get ready for bed. Chapter 48, The New Foot. Mr. Beaver squinted at Roz's stump. Hmm, I've never built a foot before. He stroked his whiskers and muttered to himself, there are really three problems to solve. The foot needs to grip the ground, and it needs to be durable, and there's the issue of fixing it to the leg. I might have to consult a few friends. Will she ever walk again, said Bright Bill. What's that? Mr. Beaver was lost in thought. Oh, not to worry. You just sit back and leave everything to me. I love a challenge. Mr. Beaver plunked into the pond and returned a while later, rolling a large section of a tree trunk. Say hello to your new foot, he said, slopping the wood with his tail. Hello, new foot said the robot. Now that's the spirit. This beauty is from one of the hardest trees I ever chewed. I just need to make a few modifications. Mr. Beaver placed the piece of wood next to Roz. He squinted, repositioned the piece, and squinted some more. With his claws, he marked different spots on the wood. And then he put his big chompers to work. The beaver chewed and gnawed and carved up that piece of wood, turning it over and over in his paws. Chit Chat looked down from a branch and chattered through the quiet moments. This reminds me of the time I saw a fox catch a lizard by the tail and somehow the lizard's tail fell off and he got away and later I saw that the lizard got a new tail and now Roz is going to get a new foot and everything will be fine. The wooden foot took shape and before long, Mr. Beaver was standing beside a beautiful carving that resembled a boot. He tried to slide it over Rose's stump, but the opening was too small. So he scraped out more wood until it was a perfect fit. Very good, he said, spitting out a wood chip. My friend should be arriving any minute with the next few things we'll need. And there they are now. I'd like you all to meet Bumpkin, Lumpkin, and Rumpkin, but I call them the Fuzzy Bandits. Three fat raccoons shuffled into the garden, dragging a tangle of vines behind them. Good day, said Bumpkin. Good day, said Lumpkin. Good day, said Rumpkin. You might already know this, reader, but raccoons have very nimble hands, and the Fuzzy Bandits use their skillfully tie those vines around the robot's leg and around her new foot. The vines caught nicely on all the dings and dents and scrapes. Once they were tied good and tight, 
Mr. Beaver threw back his head and hollered, Trunk tap! We could use your assistance! There was silence. And then three quick taps echoed down from the forest canopy. Ah, that'll be him, said Mr. Beaver, smiling. A very handsome woodpecker swooped into the garden. You called? came the woodpecker's musical voice. Indeed I did. Everyone, this is my woodpecking pal, Trunk Tap. Now, Trunky, we need some tree resin, the really sticky stuff. Can you help us out? Of course I can, said the woodpecker. You've got a perfect pine right here. Trunk Tap hopped over to a crusty old pine tree and pecked a few deep holes in the bark. Thick, syrupy resin began, began oozing down the trunk. Mr. Beaver scooped up handfuls of the resin and smeared it all over the wooden foot and the vines until everything was glistening with stickiness. And when the resin dried a short time later, Roz's foot was finished. This is wonderful, said the robot as she strolled around the garden. I am as good as new. Mr. Beaver and Trunk Tap and the Fuzzy Bandits went away feeling pretty happy with themselves. They'd done a very nice thing, but it was the first wooden foot any of them had ever made. And within a few weeks, the vines were coming undone and the foot was sliding loose. So they returned, determined to get it right. They found even harder wood and even tougher vines. They experimented with resin, heating it by the fire, letting it boil and thicken until it became an indestructible glue. They kept tinkering with their design until finally Roz had herself a wooden foot that she could rely on. Huzzah! Mr. Beaver wrapped his knuckles on the new and improved creation. I knew we'd get it right. Roz moved slower than before and she had a slight limp, but she was back to her old self again and that was a relief to everyone, especially Brightville. Thank you.